What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Anthony, Lori, and Mike. And we are discussing the series finale of A Discovery of Witches. And I know we all have thoughts about this episode. We're going to start with just our general overall feelings about the episode and then we'll get into it because there are some things I know we all have complaints about and then there are some things that I was overjoyed with so um overall thoughts what did you think about how they ended the series um to be honest I felt like I'm sorry to be honest to be honest it's like I feel like it kind of let down but see but it's like for, okay, like for me, like the the last episode was more of a penultimate episode than this one was. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I felt I felt like getting rid of Nogs, then Marcus getting Matthew getting captured, and it's like the the whole way the whole way that they that they um did whole Matthew's whole final thing kind of bothered me. I just. I didn't like it. I just it, okay. it just it was something with that with it. I was just like, I'm not sure why. I don't know why you did it like that. Okay. But I mean, there were there were some certain good parts. Like, um, I enjoyed I enjoyed um enjoyed um her putting Satu in a bad situation. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't know why I, I let you talk first. <laughs> I, look, look, I had to get that out. Okay. But I mean, I like I like the fact that Philippe is back in the fold. I thought I, I'm I mean not Philippe, not Philippe Baldwin. I'm I'm mm-hmm. glad Baldwin finally saw the light. Um, I the only thing the one thing I really wished was that Jerbert got what he deserved. We'll, we'll talk we about that. Yeah. That he got what he deserved, mm-hmm. but he didn't. And it's like I kind of like what they did, but then it was kind of it's kind of like a letdown. It's like once it was over, I was just kind of like that's it. Okay. Like we're not gonna get any more. Y'all gonna leave us like this? It, it was it kind of left me wanting, wanting like, and they did, and and for what we thought that they were setting us up for something else, like you know, it's like I don't personally, I don't feel like they set us up for anything. I feel like they just ended it and we're like, all right, bye. I was like, okay, so um, we know you're doing something else, but you didn't say anything else about it. So it's like, what's going? Well, on? I will say that. Um, I watched their live event that they did on Thursday night, and that question was asked whether or not the story would continue. And all they said was, well, Deborah, you know, Deborah has other stories out there. Um, and right now we don't have anything going on, but I will just say continue to watch this space. That's that's all they said. So I don't think they have anything planned as of right now. That makes sure first of all first. first of all continue to watch the space i know you you don't you why would i continue to watch the space yeah. if you haven't like mm-hmm. given me something like yeah but my, my final thoughts i'm sort of like mike um the promise of what they set up for the final episode based on the last episode that we watched <sighs> It, it wasn't there like mm-hmm. it was I, I had a wah 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 moment <laughs> I really did I, just, <laughs> I was like it's like really really good foreplay and then the main event you're just like that's it that's what it's all about really and um, I, I don't know I guess so first first Dana was obviously overpowered because there was no reason for any of them to have come other than borrowing Baldwin's yeah, well, helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, secondly, kind of cool seeing Baldwin holding the baby at the end. I was like, you know, welcome back and whatnot. And thirdly, the number of times I wanted Isabo to rip the bear's throat out. Yeah, but I understand it. why not. We'll, so, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll get to that. So I felt like. It was almost like two and a half episodes, like abridged in like, um, what were the little pamphlets we used to get for the books? Crib notes? Mm-hmm. Yes, it was like, yes. It was like a crib yeah. note episode. Cliff notes, yeah. Cliff, Cliff notes. notes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cliff note episode. 
of two and a half episodes. And I'm going to go back and say something. The amount of time they spent showing your boy driving around in his Tesla in the countryside, they could have taken all that away to give us like a legit battle between Satu. We'll and, we'll talk and, about that. We'll talk about that in we'll talk about a that. A lot, event. a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted space, and just a lot of let down and like you know, wet paper towel stuff. That's it. Okay. As oh, oh, one last, one last thing. I called it first season. The demons. Yep, you did. We'll, we'll talk that's about that every... because that's going to be the first thing I really want to get into depth with. So, yeah, okay. Lori? Okay. okay, first of all, I watched this with Mark and Mark basically agreed with, with Anthony's uh, wife that, that it is an adult CW show. Um, he said it reminded him of the Vampire Diaries, which I thought was hysterical. Um I like the ending. I would say they stuck 80%. The issues that I have is that they went to a certain point and there was one thing that was really important in the book, which they didn't do in the series. And that is at the end of the day with the book of life, it is the demons, but they designate that witches, vampires, and demons are not creatures, but they're human. And they almost went there and they didn't. And it pissed me off. So they're not creatures. They're human. Okay. Second point. Somebody who should have got got in the book didn't get caught. Got and I'm pissed. Might be a vampire. Gray hair. Really pissy. Last thing. I think it was beautifully done. Uh, I wanted a longer episode. I wanted them to wrap up a lot of things. I think that. The way that they wrapped it up, if you're a casual viewer, you would have been satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 85% happy, 15% really pissed off uh, how they handled certain things. And I thought that that tango at the end was ridiculous, stupid, and not needed. That's all I'm saying. It, it actually, you probably missed the most important part of that scene, but it was it was there for a reason. And we'll, we'll talk about that too. Um, for me, I mostly enjoyed this episode. There was a lot of um, emotional parts for me, but most of that took place in the back half of the episode. The first part of the episode, the first half, I think um, I was very disappointed in because I feel like there were certain things that they built up, not only over the three seasons, but over this season in particular. And I feel that the way that they handled it and how quickly they handled it was a letdown. Mm. Um, I do feel like they left some room for future products, but there was some there were some storylines that they did not really put a re resolution to Jaber, and I felt very disappointed and very upset about that. It's kind of like you gave us. You gave us this big build up to him ultimately being the architect of all of this drama for the most part. And then he gets his, you know, he gets this moment in the congregation chamber where he's basically being put in his place. But the issue of him setting up all of this by killing Philippe in the first place is never brought up, is never revealed to the congregation. And the only thing Diana says to him is, your day is coming. And that's it. That's the last time we see Jaber. And everything else is kind of implied as far as certain things that happen, like Domenico getting Venice back. But we don't know what happened to Jaber. And that pissed me off. Um, the emotional yeah. parts of it and everything that happens like towards the end, I loved it. Um, yeah, but let's get into particulars and we don't necessarily have to go in order, but um, let's start with the whole everything that happens for Matthew's rescue. OK, yeah. OK, so at so. the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. OK, just going to say it. What happens to Matthew in this episode happens in the first third of the third book. So once they re once they get him, it takes him several months to recover. And he still doesn't quite recover. For him to go get a couple of things of his sire's blood and heal, that was one of my big problems. 
because they basically kill him in the book. He's literally months and months. He's used as a walker. He can't breathe right. He's all jacked up. They think he's going to die on this episode. A couple of drops of Yuzumo's blood. He's fine. No, I didn't. Okay. You know so, what? I didn't. I didn't feel like he was fine. Like Matthew in this episode was probably. I one. I felt like again. We we always talk about. We don't know how. We can't really gauge time because sometimes they give us like these episodes where when you see things happening, it's obvious. It's been a few days or a few weeks, so we don't know exactly how long Matthew was there in that in that kind of semi comatose state. But even afterwards, when he awoke, I never felt like Matthew was the same Matthew. He seemed a little bit more to me. He seemed a little bit more human. Um, You know, just the way he was, huh? He was really frail. Yes. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't look the same at all. He wasn't the same imposing figure that he had been for three, four, three seasons. I mean, if you, if you even think about the way his hair was, uh, was styled was a little bit different. It, it, it felt a little more natural, a little more human. Um, the way that he was sitting there at the table with Hamish playing chess or even just in the church making his carving, he just seemed a little bit, I don't want to say less, but he did not seem as indestructible as he had the rest of the series. I felt like he was a little bit more um, probably closer to human than he had been since he turned. So that, that's just kind of how I viewed it. He, did, he didn't yeah, seem like the, the same old Matthew. It seemed like it took a lot out of him and he was still in that recovery fray, uh, phase as the show ended. Yeah, I agree. It's just, I mean, you could tell that whatever Benjamin did to him took a took like a lot from him. Like you, like he was basically, it seemed like he was two breaths from being dead when they when they finally got to him mm-hmm. and 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 t- took him back to Setor. I mean, he was basically done. Like mm-hmm. and well, and it does seem. While I agree that you know it should take. I mean, I think it. In, in the state that he was in, it should have taken him years. To, it should have taken him at least a year to get back. Maybe two, maybe more. Because he was really, he wasn't himself. I mean, he might not ever be himself again. Like, he might, I mean, he yeah, like you said, he might actually be, he, he might, he looked like he was starting to age. Like, all the, all the years that he didn't age started to come back, like, almost instant. Like, like almost all at once. Like he seemed like he was in really bad shape. But we also have to remember he didn't, Benjamin didn't have Matthew for as long as he had Philippe. Like Philippe was captive for months going through that torture. He only had Matthew for probably less than a day or two days. So I don't think the damage was as severe as it could have been had he had Matthew longer. I think it didn't seem like maybe he was not only draining Matthew's blood, but he was replacing it with whatever, whatever concoction he had created. Yeah, he, he said as much. Like, yeah, like he yeah. was basically taking away everything that he had and mm-hmm. replacing it with something else. Mm-hmm. So that, that probably changed him drastically. Yeah. 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 Um, but at the beginning there when they're all trying to figure out where Matthew is and they bring Baldwin in. I will say I liked Baldwin better in this episode than I have all season. And that's because he came in, he knew he wasn't wanted, but like Diana says, I asked him to come and she shows it to him and he immediately picks up on the watch thing. And he says that, you know, I have just learned that Jaber was at the root of this all. So Domenico did what he was what we thought he was going to do he told it all and this is the first episode that I've actually seen a little bit of genuine affection between Isabel and Baldwin so when I saw that you know I was like okay you know what Baldwin is on this side I don't know how long that's going to be but for right now he's on that side because he's trying to um, uh, you know, find Matthew because when all is said and done, Matthew is his brother. And he just found out in the last episode, you know, when Domenico said, What has been the source of your downfall of the Declare Mars downfall? Baldwin answered Matthew. And Domenico said, 
that's because that's what Jaber wants you to think. So he realizes too, and this has got to be humbling, that all of this animosity that you've held towards your brother for all of these things that he supposedly has done, this was all orchestrated by someone else. Someone that is supposed to be beneath you because you're the leader of not only the congregation, but you are the vampire representative. So Jaber is kind of beneath you in that sense, but he's the one that's been sitting here orchestrating all this destruction against your family and you fell for it hook, line and sinker. So that had to be a little bit humbling for Baldwin to have to come into that house and be like, yeah, you know what? I should have listened to y'all. I should have been doing this. Let me, let me do what I need to do to help. But it was, like you, it was so it was so humbling that, you know, later he tells Matthew, like, I don't even know why Philippe chose me to do this. Because mm-hmm. clearly I'm not equipped. And Matthew's like, no, he chose you for a reason. Mm-hmm. And it's almost as if Baldwin never fully accepted the role that was given to him by Philippe. It's almost as if he's been trying to live up to something that is not real. Like Fleep maybe was hoping that he would actually be his own person and make his own choices and mm-hmm. decisions. And he's been trying to make Fleep decisions when he should have been making Baldwin decisions. Not only you know that, I mean? but he's been trying to he's been trying to do the opposite of what he thinks Matthew would have done Matthew, because right. he he had his own personal like rivalry with Matthew. For, which didn't need to be there. Yeah, yeah, but and which, you know, like you said. Jabir basically manufactured for mm-hmm. him. Yeah. You know. he, he basically probably recognized yeah. recognized Baldwin's insecurity from the beginning and played on it. Yeah. That's essentially what he did. Well, yeah. well, the interesting thing is that Baldwin, when he gives Diana the temporary, you know, one day pass to be the, the Claremont in the book. That was awesome. In the book, he gives it to her completely. He resigns. So at hmm. the end of the Book of Life, Diana is the de Claremont representative permanently for the congregation. Hmm. Okay. Because he, he says in certain, no in certain terms, he goes, I was never the right person for the job. I would like, like Anthony said, he kept trying to do what he thought was opposite of what Matthew, he never was comfortable with the idea of leadership. So when Diana was there, he's like, gives her the key. He signs everything over. He says, I'm out. It should have been you all along. So we saw a good representation of that, you know, in, in this episode, because I kept waiting for him to say that it was her job permanently, but they didn't go that far. But no, Baldwin has never, never uh, really and truly wanted the role, but he inherited it because he was the oldest. Now, the thing that bothered me is that if you've got a brother that comes in and is not well liked and everyone's like oh what's he doing here and all this other stuff and he comes in he helps to to me he should have how can i put it did a better job of apologizing to diana for all the crap he put her through does that make sense yes but i think i think for me i like the way that it was handled because from what we've seen of Baldwin, Baldwin has never been that sort of humble and right. um, emotional. Uh, again, let's let's put that there. Baldwin is not emotional, especially this version of Baldwin that we've been seeing. So for, I think for him to go to her and say, I'm sorry, that would have felt a little out of character for me. Mm-hmm. But for him to say, I recognize you as Philippe's blood sworn daughter and I'm making you the de Claremont representative and the way that it happened in the show. Like he walks in nicely dressed with his orange tie and everything. And when he says to Jaber, I'm not the de Claremont representative to, I'm not here as the de Claremont representative today and steps to the side and Diana walks up. I was like, that's the biggest apology Baldwin could have ever given her. The look on Jabert's face was Baldwin's apology. And I was perfectly okay with that. Oh, if, oh. That was awesome. And then the way, the way that um, Domenico came, was like, okay. And pink. Right, right. Domenico just came in like... (laughs) I, Word, let's go. <laughs> that was the best apology Baldwin could have given her. I was here for it. I was like that to me, for her to be able to walk up to Jaber and look at that look on his face. 
and all the looks she gave him in that whole time that was all the apology that was bought when saying you know what i am sorry i please forgive me i am fully on board with the declare my family declare my scion whatever i got to be i am a full and, full declare my i you have my allegiance that's what that was to me and then she had the nerve to turn around they show a shot with her burke and inside the burke is the book of life what was funny was someone was holding her pocketbook for her i'm watching it i'm watching it right now and it's like after she, after she put the key down and <laughs> the smirk that domenico gives when oh he's putting God, the key funny. down on there is just classic and then she takes the key and walks away and jabert still ha- has his hand like this like what the fuck just happened happened? yeah 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 it was awesome it was beautiful yeah oh my goodness so while they're while they're getting ready to go rescue matthew isabel and marta are standing at the window and both of them just kind of look at each other i said oh jabir must have shown up and isabel was just like i'll take care of him i'll deal with him the way he walks in and just kind of takes off that jacket and gives it to Marta like he just owns the place. And then you have- I wanted Marta to just drop it. I wanted Marta just to be like- And and then he has the nerve to come in and say to Isabel, I'm here as a friend. I was ready. Do you hear me? I was ready for Isabel to, like you said, chop his head off. But I knew it wasn't going to happen because I actually saw the congregation scene where she reveals the tree of life. I saw that in that live event on Thursday. So I was like, oh, okay. So he at least makes it to that point. But when I tell you when he was sitting there talking to Isabel and then he gets up and he comes to sit next to her, like you can you can um, spare yourself, uh, you know, basically. I felt like he was trying to tell her, join, come, come to my side or, you know, kind of denounce everything that they're doing. Give up your grand, give up your grandchildren and all this will go away. Your son and his wife will be executed and everything will go back to the way it was. And you can spare yourself. At that moment, I felt like he was trying to tell her, especially when he was like, you are a widow. I was like, motherfucker, if you think you about to come here and tell Isabel, yeah, if you if you join me or if you be, I was ready for her to kill him. I, I promise you, had those babies not been there or been around, they better be dead. You right. He, well, he walked yeah. in there a dead man. You and right. I'm, I guarantee you the fact that she had grandchildren that she needed to look after, mm-hmm. that those babies were real. That was enough to keep her from killing his ass. He's lucky to walk out of there with his life. He could have walked out. She could, she could have done that. But you know what? She could have sat there and been like, okay, you know what? I can't do anything to me, to, to you. Jack should have been. Jack. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the interesting exactly. thing is, after all this shit he said to her, she said, you know what? You can leave. You have no dominion here. She said, go back to Venice, Jabert. You have no dominion here. Like, get the fuck out my house. Right. And especially, right. did you see his face when she said, I know what you did to Philippe? He was like, how the fuck did she find? At that point, if he, if he didn't know, if, if D- Domenico has betrayed me, did not flash across his forehead, he is dumber than we think. Well, not, not only that, I'm going to, again, I, I, now that I can talk about stuff, in the book, we have a very interesting thing, which they didn't show, which they actually put into this scene. In the book, because of what happens to Matthew, Jaber does a, one of those old-fashioned medieval things where he actually demands Angus Yisabo at his chateau as his hostage for like four months. So every day, huh? what we see in this scene, every day in the book, he comes into her, does the same shit, talking to her, comes back out, offers her the same deal for every day for four months. He's got her and Marta up in his chateau. Okay. So when they finally leave the chateau, that's when other things happen. But so he tells her because of the relationship that was had with her maker, because he was there. Because he was in love with her, he was going to, quote, unquote, save her. And he basically tells her in the book, 
that you should have never been with Philippe in the first place. You were supposed to be with me. And because you made that mistake, this is why this is happening to all of your family. Can you imagine four months of that? Seriously. I can imagine four minutes of that with him. And the way the way that when they were talking, the way he said witch, it's like mm -hmm. I wanted to kill him myself. But he was like to a vampire and a witch. It's like he he the way he scrunched his face up and said the word, and I was just like, oh. But the, the way it seems, I, I understand what you're saying, um, Lori, but the way they seem to have written her character on the show, this is about ain't going nowhere near his chateau. Right. Mm -mm. Hostage right. or not. Right. Because she seems to be the type that regardless of the outcome of what was going on with Matthew and everybody else, nobody was going to come to step tours and get those children. Right. Exactly. Not, not without fearing for their life. Right. Because and, and as soon as they got on their property, they were probably, between her and Marta, they'd be dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they would oh, be. Yeah. And the between one thing I Marta, love about Isabel... The one thing I love about Isabel is throughout this whole series, you feel her power and you know to fear her, but she never raises a voice. She never says anything ugly or and out of pocket. She's always right. She's, she's always, always right, here. right here. But when she looked at Jaber and said, and said, go back to Venice, Jaber, you have no dominion here. I felt that cut. Just like in the last season, when she looked at him and she turned around and she said, next time, send an email. I was like, <laughs> I love her. The way that she, the way that she has played Isabel this, uh, in this whole series, just in the same way. And in that same breath, you're going to get whatever Isabel is there. You're going to get the grandmotherly is Isabel. You're going to get the one that's uh, disapproving. You're going to get the one that's approving. You're going to get the one that's going to dance with her son. You're going to get the one that cuts Jaber off at the balls and says, get the fuck out my house in the nicest of ways. I love it. I loved her. And, the, and then, then Jaber has the nerve to, to say, as he's leaving, I gave you every chance. Motherfucker, she's given you every chance to actually walk out of here. That's like, right. You've had, he doesn't, you've had he doesn't realize how valuable it was to be able to leave <laughs> with his Under life. his own power and not be carried out in pieces. Because right. let me tell you, the way that he is looking at her now when he was sitting next to her on the couch and when she turned to look at him, she did this with her head and it almost looked like if it wasn't the kind of scene that it was, it almost looked like she was going to reach over and kiss him. And he, yeah. he he's holding his head like he's anticipating that. And she turns around, she's just like, go back to Venice. Because <laughs> like... she, she knows. She knows she knows exactly how Jabert feels about her. He knows, he, he knows that she, she can give him that little bit of hope and be like, nah, motherfucking, for real? Mm -hmm. You thought, get the fuck out of here. Right. Now... Matthew's rescue. As far as what Anthony mystery. says, yes. as far as what Anthony says, yes, I do feel like her taking the vampires with her didn't make any sense. But we have to remember, she did not realize she was walking into a situation where another witch was going to be. She had no idea Satu was going to be there. She thought she was just dealing with Benjamin and knowing what Benjamin has done over the years to other witches, she probably was like, you know what? Let me just take some backup. I don't think she was worried about herself, but she didn't know what kind of condition she was going to find Matthew in. Um, and like she said, that's why she needed to bring Marcus and she needed battle hardened uh, vampires because she didn't know what she was going to deal with with Benjamin. Oh, I thought it was interesting that Baldwin was the first person she turned to when she was getting prepared to go. She's like, Baldwin, you're coming, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, because Baldwin, Baldwin has been there before. He knows. No, exactly but I mean, like, he told them where he was. So he didn't necessarily have to go, but he was the first one she asked. Yeah, but I no, what I'm saying is she took him because, yeah, he knows ex he knows where but as far as the room that they were in, like he was with Matthew when they went to go rescue Philip, uh, Philippe. So he would know exactly where they needed to go instead of her searching this big, long building, trying to figure out where he is. 
So I understand that. And then not only that, Matthew is his brother. After all is said and done, Matthew is still his brother. Benjamin is still unwillingly a part of the Declaremont family. So that would have been kind of sort of his responsibility as well to go with her. Now, as far as this scene and as far as what happens, her confrontation with Satu and her confrontation with Benjamin, I was disappointed in both. I felt like, for well, one, let, let's address the Satu thing first. Satu, I feel like was a waste of a character because there's all this buildup, all this, you know, all this with her, you know, beware the curse of the witch with the, you know, the blood of the lion and the wolf and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. Her talking about it was supposed to be her and she was going to face off against Diana and all this other stuff. And all she did was throw up a few enchantments. She tried to go after Diana and Diana was like, bitch, let me tell you something. When Satu said, where's the book? And, and Diana started glowing. She said, I am the book. And Satu started, no. I was like, really? Really? She tells you she's the book and you're just going to cower there. And then when she tried to do her spell and Diana started weaving and binding her, I loved what Diana was saying. I loved the movements that she was doing. I loved all of that. But for them to hype this up and literally Diana was able to take her out like that, which I expected she would be able to do. If you remember, I've said as much that that battle was not going to be what Satu thought it was going to be because Diana is way more powerful than Satu. But for it to happen that quickly and and just be that, I felt let down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like for real, like she, I mean, I, she might as well she might as well have for all that she might as well have just run when she saw that diane was the book she might as well have just run out of room and just going back going back going back on about her business because it's like what's the point there's literally no point okay you bound her okay fine but she could like, have at least given her a little bit more run for her money like there should have been i feel like there should have been a maybe a few spells those two fireballs back and forth after. i mean damn Right. Or something for, I mean, Diana could have pretended and, and, and let Satu do what she was doing and then thrown it off and be like, <laughs> that tickles. Boom. This, this, is, this, is the, this is the dilemma that I had personally. On one hand, when Matthew was fighting Benjamin, it was like, Matthew is way more powerful than him. Why is he playing with him? Just kill him. Right. Mm-hmm. And then here we get like the same situation and she does exactly that. And it's right. like, I kind of wanted more. Yeah. You know, so I understand that that was the dilemma I had. But but in in a lot of other shows, we've seen characters who are way more powerful than the people they're going against. And we always say the same thing. It's a no brainer. Like, why? Why is this even a battle? The person yeah. is overpowered. Mm-hmm. Dan is overpowered and here she is in a situation with someone who's way less powerful than her mm-hmm. so yeah it probably went exactly how it should have gone i mean i just didn't like it like yeah. i wanted <laughs> although even benjamin was able to draw it out a little bit longer with matthew she yeah. should be able to draw it out just a little bit longer you know their whole conversation they had just just have a conversation like they have a back and forth like why are you doing this why are you even work with him have satu explain it and talk to her about it but no once again satu is basically shown again a wasted throwaway character that really was just a plot device whenever they needed it yeah well well see so here's the thing in the book her and diana actually team up together to take out uh benjamin and I feel that the reason why they had her spellbound her is that if they do have a sequel or a spinoff, they could bring that character back. Uh, as far as the actual scene itself, I thought it was very, very weak. I thought that, again, the whole thing with the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, and the whole thing, that she <laughs> should have been just as badass as you could humanly think. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you go around talking shit, you better be able to back that up. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she 
I, I guess what was the biggest disappointment is that she was such a badass in season one. Remember when she kidnapped her? They were flying. She, mm-hmm. you know, she opened her up and all this other crap, only to have her in a corner, cowering, sobbing, because Diana catches her and spellbinds her. If anything, if she was a weaver, which she said she was, I would have liked to see her try to counter the spell. You know, fight yeah, I mean, more. She didn't. She didn't. Fight. She just like, oh, okay, whatever. And it's a sat in the corner. It was well, yeah, I, a- because Diana was already binding her at that point. So mm-hmm. as far I, I understand what you said, Anthony. Like Diana showed her in this. Like you are no match for me. You know, Satu started the whole thing with the fire. You know, beware, beware the witch with the blood of the lion and the wolf. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, Teresa Palmer and her facial expressions during these mm-hmm. scenes. I thought she was going to go evil because the way she looked at that too, like, bitch, please. The the facial expressions were everything. But when Satu started that and Diana just opened up her hand and you saw the weaves, mm-hmm. the, the, the threads start, and you could see Satu's power starting to wane, I was like, yeah. I, if I was Diana, I would have been like, which one? Because we still don't know what that means. The the witch with the blood of yeah. the lion and the wolf. Well, who was the lion and who was the wolf? Like, <laughs> why is that important? They, they never explained that. Yep. But apparently it could have been both of them because remember, one was light, one was dark. I, If I was Diana, I would have been like, which one? And then I would have started binding her. But I would have played with her. But again, the the speech that Diana gives her and basically says, you are a weaver. She was like, we are the most powerful. We could have been the be- we could have been the best of allies, but you used your power for selfish purposes or you know, for to, to gain power. And that's not what our power is supposed to be for. So I understood why Diana didn't draw that out a little bit more because I would have played with that mouse. You know what I'm saying? Like you've been building this up all this time. I would have played with her, but knowing diana and who her character is it wasn't about the revenge and it wasn't about showing that she was more powerful it was just okay you know what you put yourself in this position here and you use my husband to draw me here to try to get whatever it is you think you're going to take from me okay you know what i need you to sit your ass down while i go save my husband that's right. basically yeah. all it was also, i have no me. problem with it but i i don't like the fact that it was so short it i was, didn't like it the fact that she blocked it, everybody out it was budget it was budget because like i envisioned if it were me and i was um, obviously i'm not a writer on the show but you know i would have you know had how to throwing things or trying to do things at her and then it just be like no 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 yeah. mm-hmm. nope mm-hmm. nope and mm-hmm. nope you know what i mean yeah, like That's like like snake like Snape in the Half Blood Prince when Harry Harry was trying to throw spells at him. Exactly like, mm-hmm. the same. No, no, no. We're not going to do this right now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stop you from doing all this because what did she say? Power without conscious mm-hmm. is. Uh, I forgot what she said, but I whatever it was, yeah. She, yeah, yeah, whatever it was she said at the end. That that to me that would have been a better, but I think a lot of it had to do it. Uh, they only had seven episodes and they didn't have as much money as they had before. But, but also too, she is so, I, I she would is say, so not like she was like the first season, Satu. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is not how she would have went out. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But also too, I think again, Diana was not expecting Satu to be there. Satu was a distraction from her purpose in being in that place, which was to save Matthew. So every minute she spends with Satu is a minute more that Matthew is being tortured and is closer to death. So really, I think Diana was just like, you know what, bitch, I don't have time to play with you. I have other things to do. And she shut it down real quick. You know, and again, I'm glad I'm talking this over with you guys, because when I first saw the scene, I was pissed, like, really, that's all we get. But now that we're talking it through, yeah, I think Diana just basically was like, Satu is not even, she's not even worth my time. So let me go ahead and deal with her and go handle what I need to go handle. Yeah, that that makes sense. But that that doesn't discount the fact that this is not the Satu that I know. (laughs) <laughs> you know, but like, honestly, she hasn't been that Satu since she opened Diana up. That's true. Yeah. She has Question. not been that Satu. Question. Did they ever explain why she was working with Benjamin? 
basically because she wanted to get at sure. Diana's power. Oh, okay. That's that's really okay, all. I'm sitting because I'm sitting there, there going, did I miss something? No, she wanted to show Daphne that she was the witch, that she oh, was the that more powerful. That she was the witch in the prophecy. That yeah. Works out for yeah, she wanted she wanted she she basically basically wanted to prove her little Nigo Montoya speech that she's been saying all over Venice and all yeah. over town. And yeah, shit yeah. Like and like that. Diana told her, she said the book would never have revealed itself to you. Right. Oh, I got you some know? words about that book. Later also, on. and back to back to, to go back to your point about Diana looking looking like she might go to the dark side. I wholeheartedly agree because she was literally like 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 you said the look like she kind of like tilted her head a little bit her like, facial expression and, especially and she, and she when was, she, like, she said she was, i am the book her, when she was doing the little cat's cradle with the with the with her weaving and like you really thought like it, it was almost like she was like playing with her hair but she was <laughs> like oh yeah you know i just don't understand why you think you were better than me so mm-hmm. how about this yeah sit down yeah. I, I guess i guess should do yeah so then after she... Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh-huh. And how dare she say, I told you once before, I'm not your enemy. And like, my thing is... And then that's little, is that's Dan- like Jaber coming in saying, I come here as a friend. Right. And then it's like, well, then where's Matthew? Like, you did all this shit and you gonna sit there and be like, I'm not, you're not my enemy? Then why right. are you even involved in this? Like, why are you even working with Benjamin? What's, mm-hmm. What is the point of that? Mm-hmm. You know? I, I mean, I know binding someone is a terrible thing to do, but Satu may have deserved it. Mm-hmm. She had it coming. She <laughs> did. She really did. Um. So yeah. on to Matthew's rescue and this confrontation with Benjamin. Now, I will say this is the part that pissed me off. This is the part I, I of... Have, I have no words. I'm just not going to talk about this because it is so sad and disappointing that I'm just going to step out of this because you basically built this character up to be this, you know, big bad and what he's doing to Matthew. He literally hears her coming down the hall. He looks at Matthew and he's kind of like, Oh, I, I felt like he looked at Matthew kind of in fear, like, Oh, okay. She's here. Like he was, ex- I guess he was expecting Satu to be able to handle Diana. So he comes out and as she's coming down the um the walkway she starts doing her little um her little spiel about the knots and what they're supposed to do or whatever. When she gets to the 10th knot it turns into the fiery at, um bow and arrow like she did with Juliet. Benjamin growls at her. He runs towards her. She shoots the bow at him. He falls down dead and dissolves into ashes. I was like, really? She didn't even have to go through the whole 10 knot thing to do that because she did that shit with Juliet. And what and what was the purpose of her getting a getting a familiar if we're only going to see it that one time? What's the point? There was absolutely no point in us even seeing that if she if she couldn't call it up and have him have him French fry. French fry, French fry Baldwin. I mean, that that, that would have been the, not Baldwin, um, Benjamin. Just French fry Benjamin. That's the perfect opportunity to get it, have, have her familiar come out and handle business what? so that she don't get her hands dirty. But there was like, a lot, like, like yeah. ever in the series. <laughs> like, let me tell you, having Miriam there, having Gallo Glass there, and they're not able to do anything because, you know, as she said before, she was like, this is my fight. That was between you and Satu. Now I understand the thing too. Like she told Matthew, if he doesn't come back, she was going after Benjamin. I understand all that. But y'all built all of this up to give us a death that took less than 60 seconds. Y'all should have, y'all should have given us 10 fucking episodes this season <laughs> so that y'all could have expounded on both of those conflicts. We could have had a little bit more. Um, a little bit more with Satu, a little bit more with Diana. Like you said, Laura, we could have we could have had them discuss what they were going on. I mean, I even said it without knowing this <laughs> happens in the books. I said it in the last episode that I felt like Satu would turn on Benjamin mm-hmm. and work with mm-hmm. Diana because mm-hmm. he had been mm-hmm. torturing witches. Right, right. And instead, we see a weak Satu, we see a weak Benjamin. And granted, I know Diana is like the, the end all be all right now because she has the book. She probably has unlimited power. 
but for them to build up this conflict for the whole season and then that's what we get it was a letdown and I feel like they did those two things quickly because they wanted to focus more on the whole book of life thing and everything that came after which I don't have a problem with that part because that part of the episode all that that happened after this was the best part of the episode but this I just feel like yo y'all could have gave us more than this shit Okay. Damn it! I, I can't stay silent. I okay. was gonna try, but I can't. You, <laughs> you, 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 I can't. You go first. I can't. It's okay. Like Mike said, she did the shit when she killed Juliet. So, w- w- what was this big deal about the tenth knot? So right. obviously, she had done before. Number two, he growls and then he's dead. That's it. And you notice the barrier came down once she took care of Satu. Mm-hmm. You, did you notice that? So the barrier was down. They all could have. But I think she again, told them to stay back. I think she she did her hand like this and told them to stay back. Well, and I'm sorry, bit, even even though I'm there with her, if the most powerful witch or the most powerful creature in the whole goddamn building tells me to stay back, I'm gonna listen to what she says and I'm gonna stay right here until she tells me to move. Well, she put a barrier. They can go anywhere anyway. Until after she took care of Satu. But. No, that's what I'm saying. After she took yeah. care of Satu and the barrier came down, she still told them to stay back because she yeah. was going to handle Benjamin. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I'm like you. This, this was, and, and, I, and I say, you know what? I'm just going to chalk it up to COVID-19 because that's where the actor, he was not there. It, it almost looked like the scenes of him in this hospital were filmed separately than the scene with them being there. Which Probably which right. actor? Uh, Benjamin. Benjamin. Oh, okay. I I agree with that. See, Anthony, here's the thing. I understand why you didn't want to say anything because I'm sort of almost on the same point because in the book, the villain, and this is what I didn't understand, in the book, the villain is actually Benjamin, not Jaber. Benjamin is the one that is manipulating Jaber, and he's the head whatever in charge. Uh, when they finally take him out, they take him and Jaber out at the same time, and it is Satu, it is Diana, and here's the thing that pissed me off. There's a third witch who's on the congregation who has been using a glamour, and she is actually a 150-year-old half-witch, half-vampire, okay? The problem is that they have creatures who are half this, half that, all throughout, and the secret that Jobert was trying to hide is that they knew that these pairings of these children were happening more and more frequently after years and years of shutting it down and they were getting powerful and then the vampires were getting scared. So when they take them out, you've got the three witches together, they surround them and they basically kind of do what Sarah did last week to them and they don't even use it. When she uses the spell, it's a different effect. There was no arrow, okay? She was just, I mean, they wasted time, they wasted money, they wasted my interest. I mean, everyone's right. To see her do the same trick we saw season one, when she took out Crazy Town, not a fan. Here's my other problem. As powerful and as quick, Benjamin just stood there and looked at her like she was stupid. I would have stepped to the side, you're a vampire, move, damn it. I'm just saying, okay, I'm heated, I'm sorry, I'm done. And, and the tenth knot was supposed to be a knot of creation and Ex- destruction. Exactly. The Bow- arrow is all destruction. Where, where is the creation? <laughs> yeah. I think it was also just a reuse of an asset. They had an asset that was really cool from season one. They didn't really have to work on coming up with something for the tenth knot. Hey, we, we still got this arrow thing that she did in season one. Let's do like a montage of the majority of the season one scenes. So then it has more of an emotional impact on the viewer. But uh, what about the creation part of it? Ah, don't worry about that. They won't remember that. We'll just show them the cool montage. Just, I, just... I mean, you know, you know you know what they did really good create? A familiar that they still didn't use. I'm still mad about that. I mean, it's like there's. Well, I mean, so they many they other- used it last season against uh, Kit and uh, what's her name, um, Louisa. So, 
I'm just, but it's just, yeah, okay. but in the, in That's the book, fine, the but it's the is all over the place. The familiar actually gets in trouble because Gal Glass spends half the book trying to make sure that the, that the familiar doesn't get into the neighborhood. So that was a running joke that they couldn't put in the series. Yeah, but the, um, um, but yeah, you're right. It's just, this was, this really rang hot. I mean, it was so anticlimactic. It's like, like nothing, like it was literally over in 15 in like 10 minutes and then 10 minutes they could have they could have done in a whole episode with her battling satu and them battling benjamin and that whole thing getting settled both of them getting killed them finding matthew and taking him back to setor then going about with his healing in setor them finding out about the demon dna and and diana going and going to the congregation and doing all that that could have been a whole other episode too this episode could have could have given us more and been stretched into two episodes and it would and it would have been like way better they could have, i mean one more fucking episode yeah. that's all we that's all that's all that would have fixed all this here's but, the other thing too so when diana comes in and she's talking to satu and she asks satu she's like why are you helping ben- benjamin he's been killing our our kind and Satu says they're not our kind. They they are, what did she say? They offer nothing. They're they're weaker than us. So we're sp- you and I are special. And I'm like, but you was the one who was spouting all this stuff about what you do. You know what people are doing against witches, blah blah blah. But now you're saying that you're you're better than all the rest of the witches. Then not only that, she asked Diana, she says, do you remember that time I opened you up in LaPierre? And Diana says, I still have the scars. She looks at Diana says, well, I'm stronger now. I'm like, then bitch, why couldn't you feel how powerful Diana was? Mm-hmm. Diana has the book of life in her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that makes her probably the most powerful whatever than all of them. You felt her power the first time you met her when she was jogging and her power was spellbound at that point. So why did you not feel the power exuding off of her when she walked in in the room and then change your mind about what you were about to do? Because if Satu was really that powerful, she should have been able to feel what Diana was and the power oozing off of her. She should have known she was absolutely no motherfucking match for Diana and she should have sat her ass down and left with her powers intact and let Diana handle Benjamin without interfering. See, this is why video games are the superior medium for stuff like this, because (laughs) this is a dungeon and your main character has gone into the dungeon to face off against the mini boss and the boss. Now there are games where you can level up and, and be OP when you get to the end and it's a cakewalk. That appears to be the case here. Player one has leveled Diana up to like the highest you can go and is playing on easy mode. <laughs> you know, and you just walk through to the end so you can get to the end cutscenes. But like, if this happened in a real video game and this was like the end, I would still be a little bit disappointed. Like, there have been games where I've gone to the end overpowered and they still level you down to the boss. Mm-hmm. Like they 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 don't want you to be that much more powerful than the boss. They want to make it a little bit more interesting. Here, no, <laughs> no. This had this been a video game, I don't want my money back. Yeah, I'm like no. And this is this is equivalent to Anakin slaughtering younglings. It's like this was like no contest. Like this, I mean, plus it's like after after she Satu said, "Give me the book." And Diana says, I am the book. And she had the words flowing like all over her. Satu's, all Satu is like, no, it's not your destiny. I'm like, it obviously it's is. It's mine. Because she has obviously it. Not. It's in her. She has the words. Like I, at this point, you should be like, all right, fine, whatever. I'm going, I'm going back to the congregation. I'm snitching. So you can do what you want to do. But no, she had to try to prove that that it was her destiny, her little Nico Montoya shit. And now, and now guess what? You got a knot around you. How's that feel? Mm-hmm. and and even in the video game even if you are overpowered the boss has a whole bunch of health you still gotta battle him you don't get to one shot the boss you just don't and here we we have to one shot the boss and i do know why they didn't want to kill Zubair 
because they want to have a satisfying satisfying ending where he gets to see his whole plan unravel right before his eyes. So that's why, you know, Isabel didn't kill him where she should have because he needed to be around to get his comeuppance, you know? But I needed him to, and and I know, you know, as they explain later on that once they repeal the covenant, that all crimes against the covenant would be, um, you know, would basically not count or whatever, whatever. But Jaber killing Philippe and doing everything that he did, he should have been made to stand trial for that or he should have been made to answer for that. All the talk that he did about beheading Baldwin and doing this and executing Matthew and Diana, I feel like we should have been able to see that motherfucker get killed. And I feel like we were robbed. 100%. I 100% agree. I mean, nothing happened to him except he got, except for him being embarrassed. That's basically all that happened to him and him not being in charge of the congregation. But that's it. It's like he didn't get smacked around. He didn't get attacked. He didn't get, I mean, all he did was get embarrassed and threatened. And he lost like, Venice, apparently, because Domenico is now sitting in his seat in his house. But, like, I want to know. I, I'm cool that Domenico got Venice. That's all he wanted in the first place. He didn't care about nothing else but Venice. He got it. But what happened to Jaber? That's what I, I want to know. Like, I think did y'all. Did, I think he went into hiding. No, I. Th- I feel like Domenico should have personally escorted him to the city limits and been like, get the fuck out of my city. But I wanted to see that. If he got right. executed, I wanted to see that. If he got, I I don't know. I just feel like whatever happened to Jaber, we as viewers deserved to see him get his comeuppance. And we didn't do that. And I feel robbed absolutely robbed yeah and then it's like shout out to them like when when the when the meeting started jaber tried to take instant control of it they were like ah, 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 ah. this is diane's meeting she called it she has the camera on seat she has the keys she has the floor but it's like he tried to do do his little sexist and and borderline fucking racist and Mm-hmm. Like white know, male like, patriarchy, mm-hmm. what was supernatural white male patriarchy shit, and it's like, uh, like they were like, nah, it's her meeting. Oh, she got the floor. Shut the fuck up. Oh, but I know we're gonna talk about it, but I just want to shout out to um when they did the motions, and it's like I moved the act. I I I agree. Like Agatha's hand was already <laughs> going up in the air. I moved that we disband the car. Cause I I. <laughs> No, what what was really funny, what was really funny was when they made the motion for her to become the leader of the congregation and everybody else had voted except for her and Jaber. She was like, (laughs) that's the most, like, she has been serious the whole time we see her. And to see her so giddy in this episode, like, not only is Jaber getting it stuck to him from all directions. They just unexpectedly named her the head of the congregation. And she's like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm I'm a little rusty on my Robert's rules of orders, but you can't make a counter motion to a motion without the motion being moved and voted on. I, I mean, I don't mean to be a killjoy, but that didn't seem right. Like I'm, I moved that such and such. such. I, I have a counter motion. I, I don't think Robert rules work that way. This is Jaber. Do you think he cares about any rules? <laughs> I'm just saying. He, 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 he wanted to behead Baldwin. You know, he could he could see rules. everything slipping away, so he was going to make make counter counter proposals and motions until until he figured out a way to get shit happen the way it was he wanted it to, and it didn't work out for him. And also, shout out to everyone wearing orange at the meeting. I was like, I was like, Jaber missed the did he miss the um the memo? Because like all the demons had orange on, and like Baldwin had an orange tie on, I'm like, dang. I love that orange tie Baldwin had on. I was like, okay, Baldwin, I like you today. (laughs) Oh goodness. Okay, let so let yes, let's talk about this whole congregation thing, because there was just again, like I said, the fact that Baldwin first made Diana 
the declare my representative you know he's talking about that and like okay she needs to be able to present her views the the congregation will never allow you in there blah 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 then he's like wait so there might be a way that we can do this and then when he when when he does that and he walks up to Jaber and Jaber has this he has this nasty little smirk on his face because he's like, oh, so you guys finally decided to comply. You brought the witch to the congregation to answer for her crimes. Actually, no, I'm not here as the representative. Move to the side. Like if it had been a different Baldwin, I would have totally expected like some kind of shimmy over to the side while Diana walked up. That's how it felt in my spirit watching that scene like Baldwin didn't do the dance but I felt it just the same it was kind of like one of those aha and here comes Diana and she was like Baldwin has recognized has recognized me as the sworn blood daughter of Philippe de Claremont I was like yes yes and everybody else around is just looking like oh oh and Domenico is like Let's go. Let's go. Do, let's do this. This is going to be awesome. Let's go. Oh, that was so satisfying. And then the way she looked at Jaber and she walked into the congregation, she opened up the doors. Everybody else came in. And then she turned around and looked at Jaber like, you coming? And turned around and sashayed off. I was like, yeah, this is what we needed. This was awesome. So Diana is in the chamber to present their findings, which is what Anthony has said since season one. This is without having any knowledge of the story of the book. Anthony correctly figured it out that it was the demon DNA that was linking everybody or that was causing, you know, the different things. Like literally they're saying that all creatures have demon DNA. It's, it's the one thing that links all of them. It's the thing that causes the blood rage to manifest itself in certain, you know, certain humans when they transition, it could be the key to fixing blood rage for all of them. It's the reason why there are witch demon, you know, why they're able to produce each other's offspring and why Diana was able to have, you know, babies with a vampire. It's like demon blood is pretty much the key to everything or demon DNA is the key to everything. And because of the fact that they were not able to congregate, they were not able to mate with each other or with other species or whatever the case, like they were completely isolated. That's the reason why all of the creatures are breaking down mm-hmm. and you i mean know, it, it, it when when you first hear that witches are weaker now and vampires can't sire and demons are going crazy the only thing that is like the source of all that is the fact that they made a rule 900 years ago that they can't intermingle anymore mm-hmm that seems to be a direct relation to what's happening. You know? it's, it's, bas- it's basically inbreeding. It's just like, I mean, it's like, you know, one, one race with one, 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 type of, one type of supernatural being can only make with one type of supernatural being. I mean, it's just like having sex with your cousin and just like eventually your line's going to get watered down and you're going to have bad things happen. So yes, they can't Anthony, that was humans. an outstanding theory. I'm very proud of you. It it? Good it job, Anthony. Theory. You you nailed it on the head. It was it was it was perfect theory, all the way down the line. And and, and with that, can I just put in one little? I don't, I stepped away for a second. You can let me know. You can check me if I if you've talked about it. I'm going to say this right now. The bishop women need to have a styles. What was Diana wearing? <laughs> <laughs> come on now they liked it I, I'm, mark looked at me he's like, what? I, I said i don't know he's it like, looked like a throwback to season two costumes it did. It was I, really, I, I thought it was kind of cool i it liked was, it well okay respect to, respect i like to the, the shirt, but the jacket like i hated i hated the jacket because i thought the jacket made made her look very very frumpy 
and I'm not one to call people frumpy frivolously, but I didn't like the jacket. I like the shirt. I like the pants. I like the shoes. Like the earrings. The jacket. The jacket needed to stay home. That's all I'm saying. It was like it was like a fit. The 1500s meant the 1980s because she had no shoulder pads. Were part of her shoulder. Well, pads. yeah, the shoulder pads. Like a lot. Really bad. But the ruffled shirt, man. I'm watching this episode. I'm on my phone on Amazon trying to find me a rubble shirt because I had one back in the day and it was tight. Okay. I love that shirt. So yeah, that made me jealous on that part. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually liked her outfit. But you know what? I, I really like the way that they dress her um, in this show because they put her in a lot of blues to bring mm-hmm. out the blue in her eyes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because she has some of the clearest blue eyes I've ever seen. Like I I don't know. It's like her eyeballs were painted on. They just they're gorgeous. And every time they put her in blue, it makes them stand out more. So yeah, I actually love that outfit that she had on. Um, I don't think a lot of people can pull it off, but she pulled it off very beautifully. So I liked it. Um, The other thing I thought was interesting about all of this is the fact that apparently Philippe kind of foresaw all of this once he met Diana. You know, and I'm not sure what was in that prophecy that he knew about, but he had the he had the <coughs> knowledge or, you know, to to make her the declare my representative because he probably knew that in her time, that's the only way she's going to get whatever information, whatever is found out. You know what I'm saying? So to that- think that. Mm. they're going back to 1590 was really the perfect time for them to accomplish everything they needed to accomplish even though when they went back they didn't find the actual pages then you know or they weren't able to get the pages then but for them to come back with knowledge of the book with her having trained under one of the greatest witches ever so that she could fully come into her power for her to have been able to meet Philippe and him to you know, do the blood vow to make her his daughter so that in this day and age, Baldwin is able to make her the representative so that she can go before the congregation. It's just one of those things where it's like, I like the way they pulled that part of the story together. Because when we're looking at it in last season, we're not thinking it's anything other than Philippe saying, yes, I give my blessing for Diana to be part of this family. And it has... It has consequences mm. 600 years later. Like, like Gal, Gal Glass watching Philippe either had a witch tell him of the prophecy or because he was a so much older vampire that could sense things that he was able to pick up what was going to potentially happen. Foresight, maybe. Well, remember, he knew he he knew about the prophecy. And when Diana went to confront him after the whole blood rage fight oh, he yeah. did with Matthew that's, that's when right. she started he sta- he saw her glowing right like yeah. he could see how powerful she was going to be and how important she was going to be to true. all creatures he had some kind of foresight for that right yeah yeah so yeah. yeah I I think I think I, I love the way that they actually did tie that in mm. to the story um but again yeah I'm looking at Matthew Matthew looks just a little more vulnerable, a little more human than he had been, um, you know, but I, I, I'm kind of glad that his recovery gave us a little more Hamish time because we got to see Hamish for more than a few seconds in this episode. Um, he actually spoke. He actually spoke and it was beautiful the way, you know, what was that, was, Shakespeare they was reading from, I don't know. I don't think it was Shakespeare. It was something else, but I didn't, they didn't put it in a closed caption. Yeah, but um, they they're arriving to the uh, congregation now. So I'm just I'm just laughing because you've got these new people, and of course the the demons didn't go against Agatha, which might predict it. Although I think that was just for show at this point because we don't we never see an actual conversation or you know acknowledgement of whatever it was that they were supposed to do. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Sarah. Diana kind of kind of bled all the hell when she came in and get, mm-hmm. and started and, and was the the Claremont chair. I mean that was basically it. They couldn't. They're the one shit they could do. And once she started presenting their case, and they saw that that they were they were going to be featured more prominently 
There's no way they vote. They were, they were going to vote against her. Like, are you kidding me? At all. Like, no, you're for us. Oh yeah, let's go. Sure, we're, we're with it. I mean, it's like there's no. I mean, that pretty much blew Jabert's plan out of the water because he any any support that he had, and I still maintain that he he really didn't have any demon support at all. Period. But any support that, they, that he did have, once Diana showed showed that everybody everything was due to demon DNA and, and demon blood was the key to solving all the problems. It, it, all that shit went out the window. I mean, the deal's off. Like, it, even, even if there was a deal, no, forget that. No, no, no. They, they were almost as enthusiastic as Agatha was. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you, Agatha's reactions in this whole episode, they just made everything because when Diana first walked into the, uh, the building, she looked and she just kind of smiled and when she you know, when she walks in and she takes over and Javier, of course, like you said, he's trying to be overbearing. He's trying to talk over Diana. And I can just basically like, shut up. And I think I even saw that in the meme. They were like, basically everybody, every woman in Javier's life right now is telling him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know? Oh, God. Uh, yeah, Agatha was everything. Uh, look, look, for somebody who was supposed to just be a side character, sort of, you know, maybe make one or two, you know, points. She really shined, especially this last season. Mm -hmm. I mean, love her to death. Yeah. I mean. Like when Jabir says, she's bewitched the book. Uh, (laughs) The book was bewitched long before I had it. (laughs) Not only that, but so you think she's strong enough to to bewitch the book of life? What are you really saying, Jabir? It's the book of life. Right. But when she when she brought that tree forth and everybody was looking, it was just kind of like, okay, you know what? We just gonna sit down and let Diana have the floor. We just, we just, whatever she says, we're gonna do. And you had a couple of people who spoke up, like, okay, well, what if blah blah Diana had an answer for all of them? She was like, look. I'm just being polite by bringing this to y'all and telling you this. Because, I mean, think about it. If Diane, if this had been Satu, we would have had a whole different story. Mm. Because Satu would have been more, she would have been more willing to display her power and to basically say, okay, well, the vampires have been in power long enough. Now it's about to be us witches. That would have been her thing. But... The book chose wisely when it chose Diana because that was never Diana's intent. Remember, Diana didn't even want to be able to do magic because of what happened with her parents. You know, she thought magic was the root of all the trouble she had in her life. And she didn't want to have anything to do with it. So I think that it was the perfect, you know, she was the perfect person to to get the power. But um yeah, the way that they're looking at this, Domenico was like, yo, I smell death. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But this was so satisfying. It would have been even more satisfying if she had told them what Jabert did and mm. he had gotten his, his punishment. But again, I've already <laughs> said what I have to say about that. I feel like we were robbed of mm-hmm. seeing justice for Jabert. And um, I don't I don't know what else to say about that. We were robbed. Yeah, I really I really wanted to see at, le- at least see him get smacked around a little bit. I mean, damn, it's like we got we got nothing. Basically. Nothing. Even though it, it was good to see Agatha be able to welcome her kids, her kids and her grand little grandchild. I back. told you we were gonna see them come back for the finale. I told I you know. that was you nice. did. You were right. That You're right. Nice. They came back. I yep. didn't think we was gonna see him again. Yep. Yeah. Baldwin has been. Baldwin has secured his place again with his family. He's made amends, and we see him at the end holding one of the babies, and Miriam holding one of the babies. Miriam and Chris looking really, really friendly. They are. Yeah. You saw how you saw how close she was. How mm-hmm. close she was. Chris. Chris looked, and she was like, was too close. <laughs> "Yeah, that it, that it, looks it, like." It, it, they didn't look like he minded at all. He was uh-uh. just like, oh, hey. Like, yeah, he's, oh, like, sorry. Like, hey, what's, he's like, what's up? How you doing? Hey, <laughs> and like, hey what's see, up? And then see Marcus put a ring on Phoebe's finger. 
I think we're, that we're, hurt yeah, the most. We, we, still, we, still, we still don't have any anything, nope. any resolution about that nope. either. Well, well see, I feel we're like burnout. I feel like as far as they are concerned, the way that they kind of ended some of the they showed us the ending for, I guess, you know, like, quote unquote, some of the uh, people, I feel like that was kind of an open end for Phoebe and Marcus. Like that story has room to continue by not giving us a quote unquote resolution for it. So I feel like their story um, can continue. I love that they had Matthew and Gallo Glass kind of resolve things or at least in on a positive note. Like, you know, I think Matthew... He has to realize everything that Gallo Glass gave up in order to protect Diana. Like, yeah, he may be in love with her, but look at what he had to do in order to, you know, to fulfill Philippe's wish so that she can make her way to Matthew. I mean, if you're Matthew, you really got to look at it like, okay, well, this is Diana, though. How could he not fall in love with her? That's what I would think. And I think I, I love the fact that they had they've made their peace. But Gla- Gallo Glass was taking off again. And I feel like that was also a way to kind of open the door for whatever story we may get for Gallo Glass. Now, Lori, mm. we're going to address the, the end scene. Okay. Because you had a problem with it. You know, the thing where, you know, they start playing the waltz music or the, what was it, the tango music? Something, yeah. And, and they, they come in and they start dancing. And it's kind of like a rap it's kind of like a, a wrap up. It, it's a happy ending for them. They have all of the family around them. And I don't know if you saw it because it, I had to rewind. Something told me to rewind because I thought I missed something and I rewound. I don't know if you guys saw Emily and Philippe in the background. Oh, so they, they did have the ghost show up. They were watching oh. and, and Emily, Emily was watching them dance and she was clapping and doing like this, like she was crying because she was so happy. Okay, because see, the okay, in the book, at the beginning of the book and at the very end of the book, Philippe and Emily show up. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning, I'm trying to figure, oh, at the end of the book, Philippe actually talks to Diana. And Philippe is telling Diana how happy he is. He tells her he wants more grandchildren, all this other stuff. And Emily doesn't say anything to her, but she sees Emily too. Okay, all right, so now I have to go back. They they were there at the very end. Okay. Um. Oh, two. Because oh, it's because it's playing uh, in the background. You see it? Oh my god! I cry. I when I see you, I'm, I'm, I'm fast forwarding now. Damn. I'm fast forwarding now because I I, I missed oh it. I, I totally okay. missed that. They just threw that in there. Couple of other tear tear jerk worthy moments. Matthew and Jack in the chapel. When Matthew yeah. says, I love you, Jack, I was like, that's the first time he's actually ever said it. And it was such a sweet scene. But then following that, we see exactly what Matthew was carving in the chapel. Oh, it was a oh. remembrance plaque for oh. Hugh. And it mentioned beloved mate of Fernando. And I was that was a good one. That was a good one. That pulled at my heartstrings. I was like, finally, finally. Fernando is being recognized formally by the family long overdue and such a beautiful gesture. I loved it. So, yeah, I I actually did love a lot of this episode. Like I said, there were those things that I just, that, that bothered me. Uh, The, the quick death of Benjamin, the quick spellbinding of Satu, and not getting in a resolution as far as your bear is concerned. But I mean, Diana's family is safe. Jack seems to have, for the most part, control over his blood rage. Um, Domenico has Venice, <laughs> which is what he wanted all along. And, and Agatha start, is head of the congregation now. They're going to have to start um, going around giving transfusions from demons to everybody to get everything straight yeah but i i I think that'll be something that's easier to do now especially because of the scientific evidence like they can show people okay this is what we have found like i i know that people try to do it all the time but you can't really argue with science yeah 
Because what do they say? The blood rage it was, is, is if there was enough DNA, demon DNA, in the person that was changed with that blood rage gene, that they would have blood rage. Mm-hmm. So it should be curable. Yeah. Yeah. They, they said as much. Yeah. So, yay. But so they, they just have to boost, start boosting everybody up with demon DNA now. Yeah, but I, I, um, I'm sad that this show is over. I really would have liked more, but I'm um, sad at all the failed potential. Like there was so much they could have done with just this show that we didn't get. Yeah. Yeah. But again, and, and we, we have said this before, that is one of the limitations of these series that have you know, a a small number or set number of episodes, like what could this show have been if we had gotten 15 episodes per season, or if it had been like a network show and gotten 22, 23 episodes per season? I just saw it. You, you, you saw, you saw Emily and Felicia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, I missed that. Can't believe I missed it. I'm sorry that that made the show. Okay. Now I'm, now I'm 90%. I mean, I like I said, I missed it the first time. And then some, I don't know what it was. Something told me to go back and rewind. I think I was trying to see something else. And then I just happened to see him in the background. And I went, oh, and I just busted into tears. Didn't cry. No. The other but thing. That, mystic. The other thing that they did that I loved, the throwback to season one, Matthew's voiceover. Yes, yes. I loved it. And 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 I what was the oh um well, because I'm nosy and I and I have nothing to do sometimes. Uh, I was looking, and they did interviews with uh, the woman who plays um, uh, Phoebe, and she said, you know, the, all the right things. How she'd love to have a series, you know, be in and all that stuff. And they also interviewed what's his name, Stephen Cree, uh, Gal Glass. Yes. And, and I'm looking at this interview, and I'm going, well, of course, it would make sense that if. You're going to introduce these characters to throw Gal Glass into uh, a spinoff along with New Orleans and Phoebe, you know, because Gal Glass story isn't resolved. Nope. You know, so because Diana and, and Matthew do not show up in in the, the new uh, the Time Covenant trilogy, as far as I know. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. The only thing that I didn't care for as for wrapping up is that there were a few things that they just didn't quite wrap up the way I wanted to. But as far as the show is concerned, I think that 90% of what I wanted to see, I saw uh, certain things like them being human, not just still being creatures I wanted to see. I wanted to see the, uh, the witches who actually helped them along the way uh, with Benjamin fighting him because the the ones that were in New York that were helping Sarah when she comes home without Emily, that part of the book is awesome that they didn't have time to do. The other thing is that the vampire witch, who's like 150 years old, she actually starts to becoming really good friends with Gowl Glass in the book. So she might show up later. So yeah, small things. Yeah. I hope we do get that spinoff. Because I feel like we need it now. Oh yeah, we we need it. We definitely need it. Hope we get a spinoff of something like either Gal Glass or Phoebe and Marcus. Like one one of the two. Just give us something to give us some clue. I mean, I I, I would even I wouldn't even even mind seeing like a spinoff, just like a two hour special where they where they show Soldier Bear getting beat getting beat from Venice to Sator to America, just beat them all around the world. Like, I don't care. Just beat them. But I mean, to be honest, even though even though it was a letdown, I'm glad we did this show because otherwise, this is a show I probably otherwise wouldn't even looked at twice. I but wouldn't call this it, a letdown. There were certain things that that could have done, been done better, but I think overall, I think they did a really great job. I mean, I with mean, this series. But, I mean, I mean I, if I'm being, if I'm being told, I mean. I liked the episode. I mean, okay, I did like the episode. Like I just felt I felt like it was. I do feel like there was some certain stuff that, as much as we love this show, and we all love this show, like it's a great show. 
Mm-hmm. I just feel like we, I just feel like there were too many open ends and there was too many anticlimactic moments that this show deserved better. I'll put it that way. Okay. This show kind of deserved a better ending than we got. It was still, it was still a good episode. It's just, I feel like, I feel like for all we've been through with these characters, like all the ups and downs that we've gone through, I feel like certain things could have been tied up a little bit nicer. Mm-hmm. A little a little bit, a little bit with a little bit better of a bow. I mean, we had two weavers. We could have done they could have tied it up a little bit better than that. Just but yeah, I mean I, I still love this show and it I'm I'm I wish I wish I wish we had more. <sighs> Yeah. You wanted to see in a nice, neat little bow, right? I didn't expect a nice, neat little bow. I did expect a little bit more on certain things. But like I said, overall, I am pleased with how they ended Matthew and Diana's story. Let me put it like that. I'm pleased with how they ended Matthew and Diana's story. Um, I am hoping to see more of Marcus and Phoebe's story since those are the books that are being written now. And if they want to throw some gallo glass in there, I won't be mad at all because I, mean, I would like to see more of his story, not just how he fits into Matthew and Diana's story. But I mean, he was an interesting character that I want to see more. And if they want to include Fernando and maybe Hugh in that story as well, I wouldn't be mad about that either. I mean, they could have they to... they put something in there and they could do like demon daycare. Where they have all the all the new all the new little mixed mixed up babies together, like doing causing mischief, and it's like you know no. which baby lev- levitating the vampire babies, no, the, which baby's levitating the little vampire baby, and he's like, you know, I want to that would be awesome. Any any, awesome. any opportunity to see more ransom and Geraldine, I'm down for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. X. Yeah. We see that that's perfect. That's exactly what they could do. Just like do vampires in like like Marty. I'll come, no, I'll come up with the title. That's fine. Yeah, I was going to say no because because I'm not sure I want to hear what's about to come out. From. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, you're yeah, getting they, very this, very close to a show called The Originals. We just moved <laughs> the show from England to New Orleans, then and we, we can have the originals. Louisa and everybody there all at the same time. I do not need Lizzie, to see Lizzie any Lizzie more of crazy time. Louisa. I do not need to see her. No. Well, see, that's that's the thing. That's another thing that pissed me off. In the book, there, I think her name was Freya. She's another blood sister on Philippe's side, and she's not crazy, but she's got a lot of wanderlust. And she basically is the only one in the family that checks Baldwin and tells Baldwin where to go. And he actually backs down because she's not as old, but she's very powerful. So mm-hmm. not, and she's the sister that actually convinces Baldwin to let the scion happen. So mm-hmm. she had a pretty, not a big role, but she had a, a decent role in getting Baldwin to do what he did, and she was nowhere to be found. See, that's the thing I had, because the book had some very interesting things. I believe that she stuck the landing 90% of the TV series, 80% on the book, because just certain things just didn't make sense. But the, the family, as far as the story, as Diana and Matthew, I agree that's done, over with. We never see him again. But we need more stuff. We, it's too good of a world. And I need, you know what, honestly, too? I need more Jack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need more Jack. Yeah. So because this, I, I loved uh, seeing adult Jack in this story. And um, yeah, I... I I think there's room for them to do a spinoff and maybe talk about some of these other characters and maybe just every once in a while update us on how Matthew and um, Diana are doing and the twins. But yeah, there's there's potential for more story and I hope that they find a way to make that happen um, because I would like to see it. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm very sad that this series is over though. I am because... I mean, let's be honest, we've been talking about this show since the beginning, and we've not had many complaints about this show, about the way it was written, about the way it was acted. We've not really had many complaints. And again, 
this third season, like you said, a lot of that may have been affected by COVID as far as different things that happen, uh, you know, acting changes that happened and the shortened season. A, a lot of that could be COVID. So if it was, if we didn't have COVID, we could have gotten a different, you know, a different ending for this show. We could have had a few more episodes or, you know, something like that. So well, that, it's not just this show, Hanako. It's a lot of a lot of shows have wrapped up, canceled that don't really good. De- I can't talk. Get what I would consider a decent wrap up. I mean, I've been rewatching Supergirl because I've got nothing else to do. Supergirl, yeah, they could have yeah, done yeah. better. But again, COVID. There's a, uh, any number of shows are all in the same boat. I'm sorry, Mike. What was that? <laughs> he said cursed. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. even though we have no, we have. I mean, we never got any kind of reason as for why that no, show didn't no, get renewed. Did. But yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah. But Overall, I was very pleased with the show. Um, I'm glad that it was one of the ones that we covered. And um, like I said, I'm I'm hoping for, I'm hoping for another experience with the show um you know give give us some more of these characters on screen and now that the show is over i am going to settle down and start reading the books just so i can you know kind of see what the differences were and and compare but now i'm i'm glad i didn't read the books first and then watch the show because i i would not have wanted the oh but in the book they did this and in the book they did that because sometimes i feel like that takes away from the enjoyment of the show Mm. so um but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and read those books now and you know the the compendium that i know you have a copy of i've got a digital copy the compendium is amazing i mean you could spend a couple of hours just going through that whole thing and it's really well i mean they go through histories of vampires and witches and they explain family lines and sire lines and and the different oh it's it's all some compendiums are too wordy and too weighed down this one is just right it, it it's Ooh. really done well what's he called oh god i can't think of the name of yeah. it yeah. See, see, takes it to me or message it to me is that the what world of all souls there you go okay oh do you have it Hanukkah? Mm-hmm. oh cool yeah, yeah she's got a paper copy i've got a digital copy yep so any final thoughts on the series finale of a discovery of witches again this was a very well put together show i love this show um i I really i'm hoping and praying and looking forward hopefully looking forward to the spinoffs that are getting ready to come off for it i can't wait um I'm I'm really glad really glad we covered it because it's like I said I was I really wasn't checking for the show mm-hmm. like I, I wouldn't even thought to look for it at all but I'm I, I thoroughly enjoyed everything and then I know I sound like a Debbie Downer about this episode but this episode had its moments like I really like I I I enjoyed even though it was short lived and could have been extended I enjoyed like I enjoyed Diana finally like fully showing how much how good of a weaver that she is Mm -hmm. and like showing like you know how effortless it is to her like you know now as opposed to when she first tried to do it like she was she was straining trying to tie the knots but now Mm -hmm. it's like it reminded me of in Aladdin when Jafar gets the lamp for the first time and he's like twirling like genie spoke around his finger like right after he rubs the lamp Mm -hmm. it kind of reminded me of that like she was just like effortlessly twirling the twirling her weave around her fingers and just like you know doing it unconsciously like like unconsciously just doing it and doing getting to do what she wants so that shows a lot of growth from where she was before and while I understand I while I did a kind of appreciate the more human side of the more on the the weaker side of Matthew like he wasn't like the head vampire in charge as much in this episode Mm -hmm. like he kind of stepped back and I kind of while I appreciated it I kind of missed the Matthew that was like the the take charge guy like you know like the guy that stepped forward and was like what are you gonna do you ain't gonna do shit you know who I am Mm-hmm. but it's like he's not it's obvious that 
he's not that vampire anymore. Like it's a, it's a big change for him, like totally. And I mean, overall, it, overall, is this is a really great series, and the, and it was still a really good episode. So I enjoyed it. Anthony, Lori. um, like Mike, I know I see a lot of disparaging things about this episode. I I did like it. I did enjoy it. Um, it was a good ending to the series. I just wish it had been, you know, a bit more full, mm-hmm. fully realized. Yeah, I think I, right. I really believe it was. There, there was like two episodes left on the table, just from this one episode. Yeah. But you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm like you. I'm kind of sad to see it go. Three seasons doesn't seem like long enough for any series now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's good to have something that you can see from beginning to the end, and we got an ending to the story. So yeah. I'm looking forward. Hopefully, they do more. Um, and that and I'll we'll, we'll probably watch it too. Yeah. But like Mike, I probably would not have watched this on my own. Um, I saw it. I saw the title. I was like, this is an interesting title, Discovery of Witches. And I had seen it a few times. And then, you know, like I told you before, Michelle was like, that looks interesting. We should watch it. And then you're like, yeah, I think it was interesting. We should watch it. And mm-hmm. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like you, um, I think I'm, I like the fact that we did get a definitive ending, even if for all of the characters, it wasn't what we were expecting. But I like the fact that we're getting open ended endings Mm -hmm. as opposed to cliffhangers. Because if this show had had a cliffhanger and then ended or gotten canceled, I'd have been pissed. That happens so often. It does. It shows that we like they get canceled and they never come back. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, I I do like the fact that they ended the show the way that they wanted to, that they were actually able to do that. You know, so like I said, maybe we'll hear about Jaber in a spinoff. They'll say that he's probably, you know, wasting away in some far off land pissed because nothing came to fruition of his hundreds of years old plans <laughs> you oh, know I would love, I you would know love he to gotta be him. pissed you plan something for centuries and it's all undone by that doggone witch <laughs> i'm one of the I love, I love vampires who remember the dark ages before the congregation right i would love the to see it where, where where he's in he's in like a chateau like brooding and trying to plan another something else for the next 400 years and there's a knock on the door and he goes to open it and it's Isabo and, and she's like you didn't think I forgot did you <laughs> that'd be awesome that would have been a wonderful way for them that, to end this that, oh that would have been that would have been cool Mark Mark said very very quietly when, when uh she walks you know gives him the key to walks out he goes man he said I wouldn't want to be in a room alone with him right now I like I like Mike's idea but I like the idea that there's a after credit scene and it's in a basement and he's strapped to a table. Isabel walks in. You thought Philippe had it bad. Oh, <laughs> see, that would have been perfect. Oh, I would have <laughs> taken that. That would have been perfect. Yeah, but oh, yeah, see, that's cool. They should have done that. Yeah, I like that. But that's okay. See, that's what fan fiction is for. Yeah, I know. But oh no, is, don't yeah. say that. Now I'm gonna. Oh my god. No, now. Yep. Exactly. Why did you say that? Yep. Now I gotta yes, go look. Well, I, I, I even I even have my software open. Like, give me give me a week. Give me a week. I'll throw something up. We are of the school. We are the veterans of the old school Hercules and Xena fanfic boards from back in the day. <laughs> Damn it, Hanako. I'm sorry. We got to keep it alive, <laughs> man. Seriously. But anyway, um, you know, I, I think that this is one of these things that uh, like, cause you know, I rewatch shows all the time. Mm-hmm. I think that in about six to eight months from now, when I have nothing else to do, I'll throw it on. And now that we have it all, I'll just yeah. watch it. Cause yeah. it's got to hit Netflix sometime soon. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, or, or some other thing. And I'll just sit. And, and the thing is to be able to watch it all the way through, would be kind of a kind of a cool thing, you know, to do because certain shows you can just rewatch, you know, 
over and over again, Vampire Diaries, Grimm, Discovery Witches, you know. But this show, I watched this show, the first season, way before we even did the podcast. And I loved it then because I thought it was one of the smartest, uh, most sophisticated shows out there. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're, let's face it, you can only watch so many Vampire Diaries before your brain starts to rot, even though it's an awesome show. I found I was, the section on fanfiction.net. Thank uh, you so much. Of course Michael. you did. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's right next Send to me the, the link. section, right? <laughs> Happy reading. Send me the link. But yeah, I I'm I'm glad we covered this show. And you know, I think this was one of the one of the shows that we started covering once we started this this podcast. So it's been a fun ride. And like I said, I hope we get to see more of these characters in future shows. Come on, AMC. Come on, Sky. We need we need these spinoffs with these characters. But um, I know that once they do that, we will definitely watch. We will definitely cover. Um, for those of you who have been listening to our coverage of A Discovery of Witches, we thank you for sticking through with us through all three seasons. And that's it for our coverage of A Discovery of Witches. You can find us online at www.fandomhybrid.com. We are on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Phantom Hybrid. You can watch our videos on YouTube and listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time.